Hi guys, welcome back to the Butterfly Effect Podcast. Today we are going to be giving you a ranking video, something a bit different, something we've never done before. Back in 2023, we only got one measly game in Telltale's The Expanse, but this year we've got five games that we 100% are going to cover. This ranges from The Wolf Among Us 2, Until Dawn Remastered, The Casting of Frank Stone, Lost Records Bloom and Rage, and the DPA Directive 8020. Now, Jack and I are doing two different rankings here. Jack is going to build his ranking based on what he's most looking forward to, and I'm going to do my ranking based on which one I think is going to do the best. So, uh, before we get stuck in, Jack, we did put out a poll, didn't we, which goes more in line with your ranking. What game are you most looking forward to this year? We had 172 votes, lad, and I'll bring the poll on screen now. What do you make of the results here? Well, I'm actually a bit surprised. I mean, I know when I'll go into my ranking, obviously, in a minute. Um, first place, not surprised. Second place, yet. Yeah. Third place, Wolf Among Us 2. I mean, because obviously we know that there is a, a second supermassive game in there. Obviously, we know Until Dawn technically is, but obviously that's more Ballistic Moon now. Um, but yeah, like there's a strong Telltale contingent in there for that finishing. It got double the amount of votes of the casting of Frank Stone. So it'd be interesting to see what the logic is there. I'm not surprised by Lost Records. It's Don't Nod. You know, they're a smaller company, the sort of, you know, developer. And, you know, we might not have as many fans for them on this channel yet. But, you know, watch this space. Hopefully we will later this year. For sure. I must admit, yeah, because we're such a... A big part of you guys really like Supermassive Games, so it's such a interesting thing here to see that Wolf Among Us ranked a lot higher than the casting of Frank Stone, because I thought that was a game a lot of you would be really excited for. But yeah, I guess like it, it finished fourth. And Until Dawn Remastered coming second really shocks me as well. And you know what? It was winning for a big part. Directive 8020 completely came out of nowhere right at the end and ended up pipping it. So yeah, turns out people think Directive 8020 is going to be the most, you know, like, ex the game they're most excited for. Uh, but without further ado, Jack, uh, we'll kick off with your fifth one. Which game are you least excited for? Which finishes fifth? Oh, hot take potentially right off the bat. It is actually The Wolf Among Us 2. I thought we were all supposed to have a fresh start here. I know that we didn't, we covered The Wolf Among Us 1 not that long ago. I like the game. Those that watched it will know I'm not the biggest Wolf fan. That's, you know, not because I dislike the game. It's just because I've got tastes that lie elsewhere. But I think a lot of this is due to the fact that there doesn't seem to be a lot of hype around the game anyway. And the fact that to see it seems a little bit uncertain, like whether we're actually going to get this thing. We know that they did, say, they did set a date for 2024, but there's a little bit of scepticism in the air and we know that the first game was so good so a little bit of my brain is cynical that the next one's not going to follow up and be as strong so yeah unfortunately all of that just comes together and makes the wolf among us two last in my list mate okay so guys so fourth place this is difficult because it's the middle of the pack actually that is a little bit problem problematic for me um i have got lost records down in fourth spot why and I feel like that's because there's not enough information out there. We've got one trailer, we know what platforms it's coming on to, etc. And a little bit of the story. But I think this is probably just loaded with bias with the fact that I'm more affiliated with Supermassive and, you know, the Quantic Dreams of this world than I am with Don't Nod. We know they made a great game in Life is Strange. And to be honest, I am intrigued about the plot of this one with the two timelines. It's got it sort of factors in there. Um, maybe you could even argue Stranger Things. So like, there's definitely, and, and of course Life is Strange, there's definitely elements at play here, but I don't know, I, I think it does naturally sit fourth. What I would say though, naturally finishing third, and not much after Lo Lost Records, is the casting of Frank Stone. So the only thing with me in this one is the fact that I'm not big on DVD. I've not been familiar with Dead by Daylight previously, I know Liam is, but I just worry, again, if I'm referring to the expanse in this, like, that because I don't know a lot of the lore or any of the lore of Dead by Daylight, that that's going to somehow hinder my experience, you know? I feel like if this was just like a quarry-like game where it was just a completely fresh story, there was no other elements that I needed to know going into it, 
then I think I'd be a bit more hyped for this one. But there is that like, little bit of doubt with the casting of Frank Stone. In second place, again closely following after that, is the Until Dawn remaster. Go suck an egg. Now, again, like we've seen the news, there's potentially more interactions, which is interesting because I'm thinking, you know, is it cut content or they actually somehow managed to sneakily get some of the actors back in for some lines? But it's a reskin, right? As, as great as the game is, we're basically going to be seeing the same thing just with enhanced graphics. On top of that, though, you know, going against that, we do have a new score. So I think going in the future, it'll be quite interesting. Maybe we could even do a video on it comparing the Jason Graves score versus the one that this guy's doing. I can't remember his name. I think it's Mark something. I might be wrong, though. Um, just to compare the two and just see how it holds up against, you know, the original version. Um, who knows? It could be higher up in my ranking if they do make some changes or add some extra scenes in there. But a little bit of, a little bit of me is a little bit sceptical on that front. So naturally, taking the gold medal at first spot, unsurprisingly, you might say, is Directive 8020. Um, this one being, I think, all of the other ones, there's something that I could potentially dig at. With this one, we know what we're getting with DPA, more curator, a new location, more characters to meet. But I think as well, it's sort of because of that survey that they dropped at the end of the other year, it makes me think that they're gonna take their time and perhaps work on some things. So I'm more interested, I'm less skeptical, but I'm more interested to, to see what they've done. Are they gonna enhance the inventory system that they had in The Devil In Me? Is there going to be a bit more character depth, you know? Are they going to add some, like, death by exploration or something else? So, like, there's lots of elements that could come into play with Directive 8020. Um, whereas, like I say, with the other ones, I feel like there's a little bit of healthy scepticism there rather than me sort of being quite excited for what they're going to do. Now, that is a very interesting ranking. Um, very in line with what the fans say, yeah, uh, Directive 8020. I think a lot of people are excited for that one as well. Um, yeah, I completely get your reasoning for casting a Frank Stone. It's very much like, you know, something that excites people who might like be sold by the two universes, but if you don't really know one, God knows how you're gonna find the game firsthand when you discover it, if there is a lot of DVD lore thrown in there. So yeah, no, it is an absolute really valid ranking, lad. Um, so thank you very much for pitching that one. Uh, so yeah, uh, as for my ranking, like I mentioned, I'm gonna do mine based on how well I think the games are gonna go. Uh, and if you want to see that one, guys, find out next week in our next video based off of my top five rankings for which game I think is going to do the best in 2024. Hope you enjoy it. We'll see you guys in the next one. Catch you later.